Hi, my name's Anthony Cummins, and I'm the co-author with Minami Yoshie of The True Path of the Ninja, which is a translation of a real ninja manual from 1681. However, what I'd like to tell you and what people do not know is at the end of this book, we have added something a little special, and we've added the ninjutsu curriculum of the Katori Shinto Ryu School. The Katori Shinto Ryu is an old sword school. It's one of the oldest sword schools in the world. Now, this school has different sections within it. So these schools used to do a different curriculum of things from their fighting skills with swords and spears and lances down to small weapons, even to fortifications, battle formations, esoteric magic, divination, and then as with the Katori Shinto Ryu, some of them ninjutsu. Now, I went to the Hombu or the headquarters of the Katori Shinto Ryu to meet its current headmaster, which is uh, Otaki Ritsuke. And this gentleman is 81 years old and he has been practicing at that school since just after the war. Now, what people do not know or they usually misunderstand is that their curriculum there is an oral tradition of ninjutsu which claims to be passed on since 1470, where their original lord. So I went and I spent a day with the headmaster, and it was a splendid day, and he showed me his collection of swords and armour, and then we had a three or four hour interview on his ninjutsu. Now, his ninjutsu is fantastic and fascinating and based on defensive arts against the ninja. It was to teach his samurai about how to evade ninjas or how to counteract ninja espionage. So we have been given permission, which is great, to add this oral tradition into the back of our book. And it's the first time it's been recorded in over 500 years. Recently it was put in a Japanese magazine in Japanese and at the same time it's been put into our book as an added extra for those ninjutsu enthusiasts. It consists of about 30 articles on ninjutsu and about five or six other articles on different elements that he told us throughout the day. Now, not all of his articles come from that old because some of them he discusses are in connection with the modern image. However, there is a core central theme about his ninjutsu that we have recorded and you can be guaranteed that it is taken from the oldest source known at this present time. So what type of things does the Katori Shinto Ryu Ninjutsu say about defending against the ninja? One of the most exciting things I have now learned through Ninjutsu is from this oral tradition, and it's the concept of burnt Kiri powder. Kiri tree is a tree that is uh, native to Japan, and what the people at Katori Shinto Ryu do is they burn this tree and they grind it into powder, and they will smell this powder to get the scent down correctly because a shinobi would take a bag of this powder and he would reach inside and as he approached a house at night he would spray it and sprinkle it around and then he would blow it from his hands. The point of this was is the fact that the powder is very fine and it stays in the air and floats. This was done so it would camouflage his outline so his outline could not be seen as black upon a black background or dark upon a darker background it's giving any form of outline. This is still used today in modern warfare, in camouflage. The camouflage you see is not so you can stay hidden in a bush, it's so it breaks up the human form. This powder was for exactly that reason. Now, we know that the samurai then would smell this powder, and if they smelt this powder, they would open the doors and they would shoot into the gardens to see. Hopefully hitting a ninja along the way. What many people don't know is that tatami mats in Japan are arranged for a specific purpose. Something I was taught at the Katori Shinto Ryu is that if you notice in Japan, tatami mats go round, all the way around a room with two central mats and they go in the specific way. This is so all the tatami mats go inwards and their thread goes away from the wall. At any point, the thread will go away from a wall. This was done because back in the day when shinobi were at their height, most people who could afford to tarm it were high level people who were very rich and most of them had wooden floors in peasant rooms. So when a shinobi crept in, he would go into cross crawl motion and crawl along the walls 
The problem is, these it was dark and these mats are laid out so that when he crosses, the foot will go against the thread. Shh, and you'll get, he would not know this, but they would be there and the thread would make that sound. And any samurai in the room next door on guard or waiting would hear this sound and know it was a shinobi cross crawling. So even in Japan, people do not know why the mats are laid as such, and they have no answer to the question. However, the answer is there in the oral tradition of the Katori Shinto Ryu. As well as this, there's non-ninja information in the book. If you are being tracked by wolves, you'd have to get a stick, and you travel with a stick above your head, and any time they come in close, you put the stick above towards them and upwards. I was told the reason for this is that wolves do not want to attack anything they cannot jump over or jump onto. If the stick seems too high for them, they will not approach you as prey. So, if you want the full ninjutsu curriculum of the Katori Shinto Ryu, it's now in the end of our book, The True Path of the Ninja. It's the first time it's been written down in the English language, and it's there for everyone to enjoy. Thank you.